Well, the challenge is they're talented. Uh, they've also uh, become a, a more complete team here over the last week or so. You know, they, they're, they've been missing Antoine Mason, who led the uh, country in scoring a year ago at Niagara. Uh, they did not have Trayvon Reed uh, until about a week ago, seven foot two, uh, highly recruited top 50 freshman. And uh, they've got another kid off the bench named Thompson who, um, you know, was close to double figures last game. So uh, they have dramatically changed over the last week to 10 days. Um, and uh, regardless of, of the change in personnel, they're still talented. They're learning a new system, a new style of play. And Coach Pearl has created a culture. Uh, when you watch games on television, there's an atmosphere down there. And, um, you know, so we have to be prepared to get Auburn's best, be prepared to go into a hostile environment, and uh, be prepared to execute and be the team that we, that we are on the practice floor every day. Did you coach against him before? Uh, only when I was an assistant coach. Uh, is he like high energy on the court? Is it just like he's on TV? His teams always play very, very um, tough. They play with a ton of energy. They deny you. They get after you I, in no way, shape, or form. Uh, do they put uh, opponents to sleep? They put you on your, on your toes. And whether that's just inbounding the ball, casually under your own basket, on the side out, uh, you know, their teams bring a lot of energy. His teams bring a ton of energy. Well, when you play a team that's in a, a conference like the SEC, you know that they're going to have multiple opportunities to knock off uh, the UKs, the Floridas, you know, the Alabamas of the world. And so, um, you know, for us, it's incredibly important. You know, anytime you play a road game, um, that means more to the committee. But, you know, more importantly, uh, we have to build on how we played at Missouri. We have to take better care of the basketball, especially against Auburn. Uh, we just simply have to become a better team as time goes on. You know, the teams that stay stagnant, that don't improve as the year goes on, uh, generally don't get too much out of the season. And we want to continue to improve as the year goes on. With young guys, we should be uh, trending that way. So this is another uh, hopefully positive step for us this weekend down in Auburn. I think we're learning more about one another. I think we are becoming better. Uh, I think our practice habits have uh, greatly increased here over the last couple weeks. You know, the, today's the last day of exams, so finals will be behind us. We can really concentrate on basketball for the next three weeks or so without, um, you know, worrying about getting to class and study hall and everything that goes with that. So, yeah, our team is improving, um, you know, definitely on the defensive end. Uh, offensively, we're going to have to deal with teams now scouting us a little bit heavier. Uh, as opposed to maybe the first four or five games of the year where it might have been easier offensively. But that's okay. That's, uh, that's what we get paid to do, and we have to make the adjustments. I think you mentioned taking care of the ball. Is that the most important thing you want to see from last game to this game? And then defensively, you want them to be better? Well, 35 turnovers in two games isn't good enough for our team, period. And that's, that's where we stand after the last two games. Um, when you play a team that's coached by Coach Pearl, that becomes paramount. You know, we play a team that, that tries to turn you over every chance you have to inbound the ball. Again, full court, half court, underneath your own basket. They take a lot of pride in that. So conversely, we have to take a lot of pride, um, you know, in making correct decisions, uh, being a man and getting open. And that, that's going to be put to the challenge, put to the test tomorrow. Is uh, what, the last game and last time you guys beat each other before Christmas? Yeah. I don't know how important it is, but it makes Christmas miserable when you, when you drop them. And I've uh, been on that uh, end of the stick a few times throughout my time here at Xavier, whether as an assistant coach, um, the Butler heartbreak of six, seven years ago. Uh, I think Bucknell was during exam weeks. Um, uh, we've had some tough ones, and so it's a lot better feeling. You know, I can open my, my presence and watch my kids open their presence with a smile rather than a frown. And that's true. Hey, they're a big guy. Is he coming in Bowers? Does he remind you of anybody, or is he just a unique? Uh, he, he's unique. I mean, I think he's uh, a little bit of Jarnell Stokes from Tennessee, and that he's not necessarily 6'10, 6'11 big. 
I think Coach Kelsey from Winthrop called him SpongeBob SquarePants, said he's as tall or as wide as he is tall. Um, you know, it's like trying to, to get around a refrigerator. He, he just does a great job of using his body, a lot like Stainbrook, but he's quicker, he's more athletic, um, and he has a unique ability to gather his own shot. You know, it's as if while he's shooting the ball, he's blocking you out. And he just he has a really good feel for how to do that, and uh, that's the reason he's leading the SEC in rebounding right now. I don't know if he's a good warm-up for anybody. He's his own challenge. He's going to be a lot smaller than Josh Smith, if you can believe that. Uh, but again, he's going to be a load. He's going to, he knows how to seal. He knows how to use his body. We can't get ridden up the lane. We can't find ourselves um, playing on the wrong side, of, uh, wrong side of his shoulder as the ball's coming in. It's going to be really important. And if you don't stay alert, he'll take those opportunities to, to quickly duck you in and keep that position. So our post players are going to be, have to be on their toes tomorrow. He did. You know, number one, transition defense uh, is huge. And, and you know, against, uh, against Winthrop, uh, they scored an uncharacteristic 80 points. And I'd say largely uh, a lot of those were because um, they pushed the ball a lot faster. They took a lot quicker threes. They made some. And they're more at full strength now than they were two weeks ago. So, again, I don't look at their offensive numbers for the entire season because they're not who they are now back then. So uh, it's going to be a big challenge. Well, it does, and, and I think it's really important for our team to be established by D's pace. He has to do a great job of pushing the basketball, and as I say all the time, point guards, the really, really good ones, they make the right decision. They, they do what the game tells them to do. Uh, they don't create something when it's not there. They don't take um, shots that are contested in traffic. They hit, the, they hit the open man when he's open, uh, not after he was open. And uh, D's been hit or miss in that at the beginning of the year. Against Missouri, he put it all together. If D scores 15 points, I'm great. If he scores five points, I'm great. We, we don't necessarily have to have a certain point total out of D. It's just incumbent upon him to know, you know, when am I open? You know, when are the opportunities, uh, when are they presenting themselves? I thought he did a great job in transition of testing. When they stayed latched on to shooters, he could get to the rim and he could make something happen. When they doubled Stainbrook, he hit open threes. Um, and I think if his percentage from the three-point line was what it was last year right now, um, he'd probably give you a different feeling. But you know, I think D's, D's, D's slowly starting to play better for us, and we are a different team when he plays that way. Thanks.